What's up, what ladies up, what and up? gentlemen? Welcome to the THF Extra Point. How's everybody doing tonight? Pretty good. Excellent, excellent. As always, I'm Wacko, Dabs, Janu, Ray. Welcome to the show, guys. We are discussing a pretty great week in football. Uh, if you want to, if you if you forget about what teams you're rooting for and just think about the games we watched. I think that was a pretty good couple games. Oh, how yeah, about you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't have pretty a dog good. in the fight, those were some pretty good games, I think. I think the NFC game was way better than the AFC game. The games were good, but I was disappointed with the outcome, like most of the world was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so <laughs> it seems like the 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 ganging up on the uh, dynasty of the Chiefs has begun. <laughs> I I don't know many people that are happy about the Chiefs going again. For fourth trip to the Super Bowl in five oh. years. And most people aren't very thrilled about that. I, I honestly think a lot of that has to do with all the memes that came up this year. Like they've there have always been memes of Mahomes, but it was like trending, making fun of Mahomes after he was yelling at that ref and you know, all the other shit about the glazing we talk about with the commentators all the time. I feel like that really helped. Um, but yeah, I really wanted, you know, the Lions to win. But I was like, all right. I mean, uh, I mean, the Chiefs already won, so it's just like the outcome's already poor, anyways. So one thing that uh, this week accomplished uh, to me was that it, it, it killed a couple very, very, very popular. Uh, storylines, and uh, I, I most people had to throw away their tinfoil hat. As you can see, I'm no longer wearing mine because uh, a couple big storylines that I thought were going to happen um, that I got talked into believing in uh, <laughs> did not happen. And, and I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of, I, I'm kind of taken aback. Now, the first one, I, I, I will, and I'm going to bring this up because I need visual aids for this because. A lot of people may not maybe not everybody heard about this, but the colors of the Super Bowl logos that come out well in advance um, were supposed to signify that we would have a San Francisco Baltimore Super Bowl this year. You guys hear about this this conspiracy? Yep. Yeah, and uh, I think that I think I have a theory about that. I don't know if you're going to say the same thing, but. I think that after they had some mishaps happen, I think they switched it up. If the if it's even rigged to that extent to making certain teams win, I think they switched it up. I feel like all season long it was the build up to the Ravens doing something this year. So, anyways, that, that's my See, that. my hot take is that it's always been it, that the purple it's it never signified the 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 Ravens. It actually signified the dress from the album cover of speak now Taylor's version. So it, it was the chiefs all along. You can't, you, the both, both teams are red. So you can't have, you can't have two reds, you know? Oh, that's true. Uh, that's, oh man, that's hilarious. So you think the, the conspiracy yeah. is live. We just, everybody got the conspiracy wrong. <laughs> yeah. Zoom in on a microscopic level. There's Taylor Swift right behind that football. <laughs> just <I> believe, <laughs> yep. <laughs> if you look at the reflection on the Lombardi Trophy, it actually has it's you know, got my home Taylor right. on it. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, well, uh, real quick, I want to shout out my buddy Uncle Gutty who just came in with the raid. Thank you so much, uh, Uncle Gutty. No, the Cowboys didn't make it, and thank you so much for bringing your community over. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Um, we're talking the AFC NFC Championship games uh, because that's what we just wrapped up this week, and we're gonna get into the foot, uh, Super Bowl in a little bit here as well. Right now, we're talking about the conspiracy theory of San Francisco and Baltimore, which was debunked this week. Now, the the the, the conspiracy theory really, really got hot though when this image hit uh hit the inner interwebs. Um, Reba McIntyre, Usher, Post Malone are slated to perform at San Francisco 49ers and Baltimore Ravens Super Bowl matchup on February 11th. Now, I did just a little bit of fact checking. Checking. This was a news story that actually did did come out January eighteenth. Um, fake place, not real. 
No, it, it, it actually aired. It really was a real, like, it was a legit whatever. And they're chalking it up to being a typo um, that they put in the number one seeds as a placeholder. And they were supposed to edit it before this before this graphic went live. And so that's the story. That's That's the story. But man, this really, really, really amplified amplified heavily that conspiracy theory of San Francisco 49ers and Baltimore Ravens. And man, we looked like we were going to have it for a little bit there. Um, until Baltimore shit the bed against Kansas City, but we'll get there in a moment. The other conspiracy theory was money motivated. Like, that it was all going to come down to the Swifty versus the Eminem Super Bowl because those that would draw the biggest ratings, the biggest fandom, sell the most merch. You had Eminem doing commercials already. Swift was in the in the stands, um, and a lot of people when they first started dating thought it was a fake fake uh, uh, fake relationship. It was just for publicity. So like this, you guys have seen some of the memes out there, right? About all this. Like everybody thought this was, this was the, this was what the NFL was pushing for. Yeah. I wanted to see it happen. I definitely wanted to see it happen, especially since lions have never made a super bowl before and chiefs are just, I mean, they have so many times the past couple of years. So, I, I like the that meme of Eminem that I saw where he was like flipping off a guy, giving him the bird, or staring at him. He just flipped off some random guy in the crowd. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Apparently, I saw I saw one meme where Eminem was up in this uh, up in his box, flipping off the crowd, and it was when Detroit had the 20, 24 to seven lead, and then the bottom half of the meme showed the final score, and it just had him like you know with his head down. <laughs> I was like. Ouch, man, man. Let's go ahead and get into the game. Do you guys, you guys feel for Detroit? Do you wish they had won that game? Yeah. If they didn't play that risky play calling like they did against the Cowboys, they would have been tied during that yeah. game because of the field goals. That it's they it's another taken. another example of the Campbell factor. He is. It, yeah, they have good success on third and fourth down, but when when it comes down when the when the game's on the line, the clock management and the play calling is not it's not Super Bowl caliber. They they went on a great run, but they they still have a lot to work on. Yeah, yeah. And you know, um there's a lot of coaches in the NFL that get get um bagged on for being too conservative. So Dan Campbell being the other way, although although he's He's cost himself some, uh, you know, some W's. Um, it's kind of refreshing, still, don't you think? Like, would you rather I mean, have a fun, coach? It's that... fun to watch, but I'd rather watch. I'd rather watch better play calling and and see put have a, a game winning drive put back together. Well, sure, uh, we all all want to, we all want our teams to be perfect, but which one would you rather have a, a coach that's too conservative and cost your your team losses, or co- uh, a co- or I mean, cost your team? Wins there needs to be a balance, and the problem the problem is he's he's shown time and time again now. Yes, he got really far, but he's shown time and time again that he's too aggressive, too gung ho, and it in cases where in in situations where he shouldn't be. And I guess I guess maybe I'm just a little bit biased because I had freaking Jason Garrett for for like eight years, and and the guy was like we were begging him to go for go for it on fourth. You know, sometimes, and, and it's that's a very popular thing nowadays in today's NFL. Whereas, as Cowboy fans watching Jason Garrett, uh, punt, 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 or you know, take a knee, go into the halftime when they were across the fifty, and it's like, come on, get some stones, man. And for to me, watching Campbell coach the Lions the way he does, I, to me, it's refreshing. I kind of like to see it. I know it, it, it. He needs to find the balance, but I'd rather have him than Jason Garrett any wow. day of the year. Yeah, he makes the game more fun. He makes the game more fun to watch. Yeah, he, he may he 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 might be aggressive, but man, it's it's fun to have your team go for it. You know, to 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 put it all on the line. 
Like, I'd much rather that than than some of the stuff that we had back in the Jason Garrett era. I mean, yeah, yeah, Jason Garrett always showed his belly. Is that the coach you'd rather have than J- than Campbell, Dan Campbell? I feel like he should stay. I feel like what they did this season is much far than, you know, they've gotten in a long time. And even though he scuffed that game when he shouldn't have, I mean, besides that, they had a great season. And for the past, like, three or four years, they've just been drafting bangers, bro. Yeah. I Dan feel like Campbell he just, just did the same. If anything, you know? Dan Campbell's getting a contract extension after that. You know. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> no one's doubting he's he's the, the guy for the job. But, you know, you, you get teams that get this far – uh, they go into the off season and they reassess and they, and they, they change things up and they, they, they go about things differently. You know, they carry over a lot of the good things, but they, they, a good football team is going to, is going to overcome it and they're going to come back and they're going to, they're, they're going to switch things up and fix the mistakes. So if Dan Campbell comes out next season and he said, and he blow, you know, do I think the nerds should ruin everything and, and every every game time decision should be made by the what the statistics show and the what analytics. the metrics show? The analytics, no. But if he comes out and he's you know, he's in he's in these situations where, you know, all you need is a three is a is is a three pointer to to tie the game up and, and or tie the game up and take it to overtime or or put trust in your defense. Um and he keeps making these crazy calls if they don't pay off every time, if they're paying off, if, if they're not even paying off most of the time, then it's not worth it. And they learn from their mistakes. Yeah. wonder how he is in a casino. <laughs> All in. Jason is losses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a, yeah. It's a gamble, right? It is every time. Um, uh, Cause not every, not every touch, not every field goal is guaranteed. Um, not every, not every uh, going for it on fourth down is going to convert. Not, a, you know, I mean, no matter what you do, it's, you're gambling. Um, and I, I guess just the point I was making is just a, it, I, I, it's it's entertaining to watch. And I he, think I think he'll figure it out. He's the guy that goes to the blackjack table, wins like three times his profit at the beginning, and then just puts it all in. Then, yeah. <laughs> then he lands oh, on a, he lands with a seven uh with like an 18 and he's like you know what hit me just like he had the 49ers all in at the beginning and then just you know but anyways <laughs> seven you calm down over there i see you in the comments already talking about the super bowl we're not there yet we're still talking about the conference champions welcome to the show buddy you're 13 minutes I mean, late i i do want to point out that the Purdy storyline <laughs> is pretty good like we I feel like we've mentioned too many times on on this podcast throughout the season that oh Brock Purdy he's just a game manager he's just a system quarterback and and you know I think this performance in the in the NFC Championship proves that to be different I think last season if his elbow doesn't blow up uh, that he that we have similar outcomes to this game he led the third largest the he led a comeback from the third largest deficit in conference championship history. Um, yes, CMC punched it in for two, but at the end of the day, you can't just stick anybody into these situations. And he, he got the job done. He did a really good job. He was poised. He, you know, mm-hmm. he's cool, cool as a cucumber. Um, he, those are cool. Those are cool. I, again, <laughs> I, 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 I really think they, they found something with him. Um, I, I don't think he's just a, a, you know, a warm body filling the quarterback role. No, definitely. I, I think uh, they they definitely have their starter in in uh, in San Francisco. Like, there's I I don't know if I don't know if he is gonna duplicate what he did this year. Um, I don't know that he would do as well as he's doing right now if he didn't have basically the best team in the NFL around him. Um, but you got to give credit to, when credits due. I mean, he's he did it. He showed what he was capable of last year. They gave him the job this year, and outside of a few games, he did exactly what he was he what the 49ers entrusted him to do. And he's in the Super Bowl, and there we go. That's yeah, Digital Navy just 
basically yeah. summarized what I just said. Yep. Say what you want about him. He's in the Super Bowl yeah. and 30 other guys are not. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, he's, uh, he's not, he's not the game, the game manager in a sense, like, like Alex Smith was back in the day, yeah. right? This guy could actually do more. He's being entrusted to do more and he's, and he's doing it. You know what I mean? So yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. I'm, we can't call him elite yet, but we can call him really damn good. Top tier. Yeah. So yeah, I, would you put him with Joe Burrow? Same category. I mean, you gotta you, no. you gotta put you gotta start thinking about that because Burrow is another really great quarterback that has a really great team, has a pretty damn good team around him, and and he's been to the Super Bowl early in his career as well, so he's on the right track for sure. Problem is, he's uh, the dur- the durability factor. He you can't even put so the discussion right now and well, how many pop- full seasons has Burrow played? Not enough. That's the problem. Yeah. That, that's what I'm saying. Purdy, Purdy was doing really well until his elbow got destroyed in the in the championship game last year. Yeah. Um, the the thing with Lamar, uh, I'm sorry, the thing with Burrow is he he hasn't he he hasn't gotten he, yes he got to the Super Bowl, but that's it's still a very small sample size. That's really the realistically the only season he's completed without injury. Okay. Um. And I would, I would, I would argue okay. that he's had less of a team burrow around. Him. I agree, and I would argue that if, if he stays healthy, he's the biggest threat to Patrick Mahomes. Because Lamar is out of excuses. We're gonna get to we're gonna get to the AFC in a minute, but yeah. Lamar's out of excuses, and and Josh Allen is not the guy. Um, really, I think Joe Burrow, talent wise and and leadership wise. He's he's Patrick Mahomes' biggest threat. I do I do so, agree with you. He's an Ohio guy, so I've, I've, I've you know. And yeah, when you look at the right. NFC, there there are there are a lot more uh, quarterbacks to discuss, but at the end of the day, Purdy is is standing tall at the moment. Yeah, I mean, there's always the argument about. Well, he has a crack team. He's got CMC and Debo and all these guys. But at the end of the day, like uh, I forget who said it, but he's he's in the Super Bowl, uh, yeah. and that's what matters because he's a young guy. And yeah, he's got a crack team, but he's doing what he's supposed to with having a crack team. Tua has, you know, two of the best has, exactly, Tua in the is the best, uh, the best, the best example of this. Yeah, and that was the argument at the beginning of the season. We were all talking about Tua because, you know, he was at the top of the boards and stats, and everyone was like, oh, well, you know, he has Tyreek Hill and Waddle and, uh, you know, a chain and all that and blah, blah, blah. But he didn't make it, but guess who did? Mm-hmm. Purdy did. So, and, you know, like the argument about if he, if he didn't get injured last year is ridiculous too. So he may not be the best fantasy but when we're talking real sports, I mean, he's there, so you got to give him props, especially if he wins it. So you know, like Rogers, you know, Rogers was never a huge, huge fantasy threat, but he you know, was... aside from he pretty... really was Lamar. <laughs> this aside season. from 2007, 2008, neither was Tom Brady. And yeah, look I was at the success say, he had. Was Aaron Rodgers he never, was much he was better the top, at fantasy. He was never the top guy with in terms of stats. Yeah. Yeah, that was for a long time. That was one of my knocks on Tom Brady was the fact that he was never, well, not never, but there were because there were some seasons he was very deserving of the MVP uh, trophy, and he won a couple too. Um, but the the majority of when you look at the the his his uh, career from end to end, most of the years that he was in the league, he wasn't even the best quarterback, right? You know, and it's like, and that was always kind of my my fallback for why he wasn't the goat. Because, like, he's not even the best quarterback in the league. He's just got the right team. He's just got the right people. You know, yada, yada, yada. I gave up that argument a while back. But <laughs> point yeah. is, like, um, yeah, uh, I forgot what my point is, actually. The, the point is <laughs> there are guys that are tearing it up stats-wise in the regular season or even through the playoffs. And as as Brian just said in the comments, they're sitting at home. Or they're they're working on their tan in, in Cabo right now. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, Brock Purdy, the last pick in the draft, second year second year in the league, is on his way to the Super Bowl. 
Yeah, and, and a lot of people thought he was going to do it last year too. <laughs> was Russell all... Wilson in his second year when he got in the Super Bowl? Uh, golly, I'd have to go fact check that. I don't because know. Because if I remember right, Matt Flynn was brought over there from Green Bay to be the starter. They drafted Russell Wilson, and he took over at camp. And then it was the following year, I think they won the Super Bowl against the Broncos. Could be. I know I know he won one pretty quick. And he hasn't done much since. No. I mean, the, the, the Seattle was really good for a, a, a pretty long stretch. And they even went and uh, lost that one Super Bowl where they didn't run run beast mode. So yeah. they went to this. The, he has two Super Bowl appearances for sure. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. Thanks, Brian. Yep, he was drafted in 12, 1 and 14. So. There we go. I find it interesting that the Ravens had one of the best rushing offenses in the league, and they barely ran the ball. And then on top of that, Patrick Mahomes all of a sudden in the playoffs goes out there and connects with Kelsey multiple times, and Kelsey just all of a sudden looks good again. And he's yeah. back. And Kelsey he's knocked yep. all the rust off for this game. Mm-hmm. Bro. The, 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 was... the, best, the best comparison I can think of is 2019 – Rob Gronkowski, he was a mess in the regular season, but mm-hmm. come playoff time, he pulled it together and put on one of the best, if not the best, tight end performances in in the postseason in history. He he was he was an absolute filthy weapon, having after having arguably his worst year uh, in the regular season. So the, I'll tell you, these guys. The, the Chiefs figure it out. They they manage to do it every year. Um, I will when you say have that they, the playoff experience that the Chiefs have, especially with pretty much most of that team, are all very experienced as well. Like that's coach. that's that extra gear that you find that really that's what a lot of people why a lot of people doubted people like Purdy and CJ Stroud and and Love and all these young guys, all these young leaders. That's why they got doubted were were you know everybody knew that Mahomes was capable of doing it. You know? Yeah, I mean, that's got to be, you know, proof that having valuable experience in the playoff really pays off because they out of any team have the most experience not only in the playoffs, but in the Super Bowl. So Mahomes can keep it cool. You know, these guys can keep it cool. And um, I was also saying a huge impact is not just Mahomes and Kelsey and all those guys, but it's the Chiefs' defense. I feel like the Chiefs have a spectacular defense. Every single time that my boy Legereus Sneed is out there, he locks down every freaking body. Zay Flowers got like one great catch that game. The rest of the game, straight lockdown. That 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 was all there was to it. And the if, reason why Chiefs, if defense- not for if not for Sneed, the 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 Ravens would have. First of all, Zay Flowers would have scored that touchdown. It got got Sneed Sneed forced the fumble, uh, essentially on the 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 end line, the goal line. Um, God, it really felt like everything was going against the Ravens in this game. Like that is such a such a crazy fumble. Like it was it was it was in his hand it, at live. I was like, "There's no way that's a touchback. That's a touchdown." Like. I see when I saw that live, yeah, I was like, same. "What are they even? What are they even yeah. reviewing?" You know, like I was, was like, "Nice no, popped out when it hit the ground. It was fine. perfectly popping out right before he goes over the line." And I'm like, "They can't win this game. They, like nothing is going their way in this game." It was crazy because yeah. we're talking about a Ravens team that absolutely blew out the Lions. And the Lions are the same ones who, at the beginning of the season, uh, beat the Chiefs. And now they just, you know, absolutely blow out the Ravens. It's weird how football works. But well, they didn't really the blow out the Ravens. The, the Chiefs didn't? No. I remember. I mean, what was the I, score again? I, I feel like they dominated the game. I don't know that the I the I think score... the defense dominated the game. I don't, I don't think it was I, I think it was more the Ravens mistakes. I don't think it was the offense, you know, chugging on all cylinders. Okay. There For some reason I it, thought that the score yeah. was higher, but you're right. You're, th- you're thinking of the Ravens beating the Texans by 24 points. 
and then getting held to 10 points in this game. Like it, 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 it was a totally different, totally different Ravens team. So before I get into my, into my rant, I just want to point out that when we're discussing elite quarterbacks and Lamar Jackson had a career year, um, but that performance in, in, in this game was outright embarrassing. He has no excuses anymore. He got the, he got the record setting, you know, he has the record setting contract. He has two lockdown tight ends. He demanded OBJ. He got OBJ. They, they signed, they, they drafted Zay flowers in the first round. Who's been nails all season. They have one of the best defenses in the league. And he, he's like Josh Allen. He's like Dak Prescott. He just cannot get it done in the playoffs. And it's a shame. It really is because the, the Ravens were rolling and they had a historic, they had a historic year. We're talking about c- comparisons to the 72, uh, 72 Dolphins, um, one of the best teams in history. And it, it, it just all comes to an end in an embarrassing loss with multiple turnovers and terrible decisions and just outright bad performance. I hate, I hate that be, because especially, I mean, and it honestly, it really doesn't even have anything to do with the fact that you just compared him to Dak, but the Mar, he has no success in the playoffs. I don't think that's accurate because we just saw him have an incredibly dominant game last the week before. And granted, I know Houston's not KC and vice versa, but, um, but I mean, Lamar Jackson was so dominant in that game. And let's not forget, that was the playoffs. You yeah, know? no, the, like, you're he, right. I mean, to say he doesn't have any success in the playoffs is, it, you know, the, you're right. He does. Like, he's won games. Okay. But there are lots of middling slash bad quarterbacks that have won playoff games. Yeah. They're, I just don't think it's fair to characterize, characterize him as a guy that can't do it because, because he lost this one game, you know, it just it's sucks. the fashion in which he lost it. Sure. I mean, there's some of that too. It, it, maybe it's a little bit of me just being defensive because, because look, he, I, he's I've, in that same I category been, as Dak. I have been, and, look, I have been, I have been rooting for the Ravens all season at this point. Uh, I I had them I had them in the Super Bowl winning the Super Bowl, um, and he just it, it, if the floor fell out from under them, that they looked like they honestly they looked like the Dolphins the way they played this last game just absolutely abysmal, and yeah. it's it's it all falls on Lamar in this case. It's like every single team that goes against you the can, Chiefs, they just get you a can curse blame that one drive on Zay Flowers, but the very next drive, he throws an interception in the, and the in fumble the too. Well, triple, I don't, I don't, triple I don't coverage. Even blame, what is he thinking? I don't even blame Zay flowers for the fumble that ended up being a touchback. That should have been, that should have been an easy touchdown, but because you know, and I'm, but I'm definitely not putting that at the Lamar's I, feet. Right. I blame know? him for, I blame <laughs> him for the, the, the terrible taunting, which that's an absolutely rookie move. And then the fumble, you're right. was an incredible play. But then instead of, in, obviously he's mad, but instead of taking it like a man and moving on to the next one, he goes and he slams the bench and cuts his finger open, and then that's yeah, a self-inflicted sorry. injury, and then he becomes a non-factor for the rest of the game. Yeah. Good players, generational players, first-round picks, you know, obviously more veteran season guys, they make a mistake, they go back and they, they fix it, and they, they do a better job they don't they it doesn't all, they don't spiral and, and go out of control and and cause a whole disaster who did that and that's what zay flowers okay, okay. yeah okay. yeah i just I, it happens right and to digital navy's right i mean it's it's definitely yeah we're we, we got a pattern going you know we definitely do i guess i'm just saying you know it's not like it's not like the the Ravens are gonna go away from Lamar because he can't win a yeah. game in the playoffs or he can't he's two and four in the playoffs. Like yeah. he's still the guy. He's still the guy yeah. that gives them the best chance to win. Oh for sure. And yeah, and Ray's right, you know, Zay Flowers, I bet he learned a lesson the hard way. Uh, I'm not yeah, saying burn yeah. it all down. I'm not no, saying no, no, no. I know means, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, agreeing with you. I'm that, saying you, you know. look at this game and it was definitely it, it was it was a a royal 
choking and and an absolutely unprecedented meltdown for what was supposed to be a historic team. What was this? Who was the the odds on favorite to win the Super Bowl? And they they fell apart. I say, yeah. I, you know, part of it for me too is I give the Chiefs a little bit of credit. You know what I mean? Uh, granted, they didn't they didn't blow them out seventeen to ten. It's not a huge landslide, but watching that game, the eye test, um, the Chiefs were in control of that game the whole time. Yeah. From the minute from the minute they scored on their first drive to the end of the game, the Chiefs were in control of that game, and uh, I think they have to they have to get some credit in this. It, it can't. It it wasn't a Lamar Jackson choke job, uh, you know. To a certain degree, it, it probably was a little bit, but it wasn't all that. Uh, the Chiefs they capitalize off of off of his poor decisions, though. Yeah, that's what I was saying about the the it Chiefs. It was a defense. defensive game on both sides. It was a, it oh, was yeah. a defensive defense. battle because the they game. just put up the points in the first half, and then after that, they didn't do they didn't have to do anything. Just sit back and watch the game because the whole defense just did all the work. And all yeah. the Ravens had to do was catch up, and they couldn't because they defense. couldn't do it because because Lamar was making bad decisions, bad a decisions, Super Bowl, mistakes, and a good in f- facing a good defense. It's a all true part of the Super same Bowl puzzle. caliber team, a true Super Bowl caliber quarterback comes back and wins that. They were down, they they weren't down very much. the 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 Niners came back from what was it, twenty four to seven at the oh, half. Wow. Was that the score twenty four to three? It was something ridiculous. It was a lot. Again, the third, the third largest gap in in champion conference championship history, and they came back from it. So, yeah, I was already yeah. like signing off, stop watching the game because I thought the Lions took it, and I tuned back in, and I was like, "What the hell, bro?" <laughs> it's in disbelief. It's it's the playoffs. You don't you don't turn out a tune out of games in the playoffs, man. Uh, it's yeah. I was already I was already spending my V bucks. I thought I won. And <laughs> what's insane? <laughs> what is insane is that the 49ers do not ever play good from behind. And what the hell, bro? Yeah. So I mean, just all your football knowledge, just throw it out the window in the playoffs because it does not matter. It's. It, it, that would that yeah that was really really crazy turn of events like how quickly the momentum in that game changed and it went all i mean it was like the ta- the table just went like that and every the, they were running Pretty downhill right. the rest the rest of the game they were running downhill you know it was yeah. like yeah it it was crazy yeah i guarantee he was on the sidelines like, just give me the fucking ball he was mad. <laughs> Bro, Guaranteed. and and Detroit was and running off. right up the gut of San Francisco the entire first half. A boy like, Gibbs. Bro, Gibbs. And, and, and uh, Montgomery. I was so yep. mad because of how much how many bets Montgomery had cost me uh yeah. the week before. Um that I would I I was like every time I looked at the it was it was Montgomery running up the gut for eleven yards and I was like wh- yeah. where was this guy last week? Cost me two <laughs> bets. <laughs> yeah, what Seven said, I think that's going to be in Dan Campbell's brain the entire season until he makes it to the playoffs again. Like that type of stuff eats at you. So he's gonna be thinking when he goes for it on fourth down because after you take a team like that to the playoffs and lose that close to go into a Super Bowl, that's going to be in his head for the rest of his life if he doesn't make up for it, you know. So did anybody, I think he's going to make some changes. Did anybody hear uh, – I, I don't know, I, and, and I'm paraphrasing because I don't even remember the exact quote, but I had thought I heard somebody say that he, he was quoted in the locker room as saying basically like, good job, guys, we might never be here again. Like, that's that, trash. Like, it, I mean, got, that, that could have been taken out of context too. Like, you gotta think like, hey, we did our best, but you know, you might. This is a once in a lifetime thing potentially. You know, he I don't said think after it's... the game was over to his team that this was the last chance they will have at a Super Bowl. Is I don't know if that's true or if that was uh, maybe he said might be it. like out of, out of context maybe or maybe fabricated entirely. Just seems yeah. out of character. Dan, yeah, Dan Campbell's not saying that. He will die with that shit. Yeah, not in that context, at least. Yeah. Yeah, he bleeds blue and silver, right? Like, yeah. I don't, I don't, I, I don't think that's true. Uh, but I, I don't. 
out out of context, I could see I could see it being him saying something to that effect, like, like, guys, like, we might never be here again. So you know, you guys did you 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 did your best. Don't hang your head down. You know, like in that kind of a contest, like, be proud of what you accomplished because some people never even get this far. Type of a type of a thing. You know. Like that that to me sounds more okay, so damn that Kimmel. quote okay so that quote isn't this is the last chance they will have at a Super Bowl it's they may it may have been their only shot which is not wrong a lot of guys don't make it back to that level so I think it's different than saying you guys aren't this is your last chance you're gonna have to make the Super Bowl okay. I think that the the Lions are going to be back in the playoffs a hundred percent. Yeah. I oh, think their yeah. offense is ridiculous. Of course, it's always the Lions, so you never know. But like, just what they have right now is just generational talent. Like on a rookie level, young player level, they have so many good people. Like their wide receiver list is absolutely stacked, and yeah. their running backs are stacked. Like they have everything they need on offense. Like they it's have ridiculous. The, the young Travis their, Kelsey. Their yeah. running back. They they had. The, the Lions had two running backs each, each get a thousand yards and 10 touchdowns. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Yeah, that's unheard of in today's NFL. Um, the only threat to the Lions, you know, and we're looking ahead, this is going to be some major offseason talk, um, you know, in the coming weeks, but the um, Packers, the Packers, and then, and then the, the, the whatever I mean, happens with the Vikings. Well, not only that, but you got Chicago that kind of seem to seem to start figuring some things out they're rebuilding. next year. They're but they're drafting they, Caleb Williams. They've got yeah. a lot of capital, you know. They they're they're not to be overlooked entirely, I don't think. And then, but it definitely Green Bay. And who knows if uh, if Kirk Cousins gets back in the driver's seat in Minnesota? We kind of, I mean, he's nah, in that. He's going to be an Atlanta Falcon next year. Bro, no I don't no know, shot. man. I don't I know. I think there's man. only one team that that would actually pay him forty five million dollars, and that's the Minnesota Vikings. He, they, they love yeah. him there. He loves it there. I saw, in, you know, just last week he was like hanging out in a high school because somebody found like saw yeah, him at crossed, a Chipotle or some shit across the street, and, and then he ended is up there a Coles near Chipotle. Huh? Is there a Coles near Chipotle? A Coles. <laughs> You ever see those things? He's like, well, like he, he dresses, he gives his clothes at Kohl's. It's Kohl's cash. Oh, geez. No, I don't know anything about that. You know, come on. Somebody in chat's probably heard of that. Brian, I'm sure. Anyways, go. Anyway, but yeah, he, uh, he, he, they, he was at a restaurant across the street from the high school or something. The kids saw him and, and told the teacher, and the teacher said, if you can get him in here, I'll get you extra credit. So the kid relayed the message to Kurt Cousins, and, and Kurt showed up to their, audi- to their class and gave, so the kids could get extra credit. Like, he's a good dude. They, they love him there. They love him there. It's crazy. It, so I, I could even see him giving them a, a, a hometown, give, him giving them a hometown discount just so that, you know, they can, they can continue to put pieces around him, you know? I don't know. That's, but that's, like I said, that's off-season well, Reports are saying we'll he there. wants a lot of money, like $45 million. Yeah, I mean, wouldn't you? Just, I mean, yeah, but that's what it, your agents is gonna, that's, that's, that's tough to say. On investment there, you know, that's what that's your agents going to put out there in the world. That yeah, doesn't mean that's, that's, that's what tough. ends up happening. It's a it's a bold bold take to say that he's gonna that you know seeing how he's publicly saying that you know he wants forty five million a year, and then your take is that he might give them a home. I mean, he might give them a hometown discount, but if he's asking for that kind of money. It's probably they're, they're at. We just saw how crazy this quarterback situation was this year. Pitch them high, watch them by. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but you're always, a... yeah, you're always going to go for the money when you're a free agent. But until you find out you can't get it, then have the a ne- side note. Negotiation starts. Uh, so I know we're not talking about the Cowboys the rest of the season, but there is an actual news update. So there's a reason why I'm bringing this up. So I want you guys' opinion on this. It's kind of like encrypted a little bit. I already posted, you probably saw it. But uh, this is a quote from Jerry Jones. 
It says for context that Jerry Jones refused to commit to signing Dak Prescott to an extension because the team is taking a holistic approach on the offseason. Um, but he did say this. He said, Dak has done nothing to change my mind about any promise for the future. I think I've said that we will go as far as Dak takes us in the playoffs. Remember that. And then he said it so again. We will go as like far it. as Dak takes us, and that's as far as we went. So, And then he said that doesn't change a thing. We'll go as far as Dak takes us. He said that three times. Okay, so let me let me just tell you guys so we don't spend a whole lot of time on this, especially right now, because there will be tons of Cowboys sound bites from Jerry Jones for the next three, four months. Yep. Like, what the, in Jerry speak, that means Dak is the guy. That's all he's saying. I don't Je think so, bro. Jerry I, Jerry I screws up screws up saying hello to people. Man. Here we go. <laughs> Jerry Jerry is he's. I don't, man, Jerry says some weird shit to the media, man. He really does. And, and if you're a local guy, you hear the local sound bites, even yeah, yeah. They're, they're 10 times what you guys hear nationally do we hear on the local radio. We have we have three sports sports radio channels here in the DFW. Like, you know, turn them all on, and every day it's a new sound bite from Jerry Jones. Like he has his own show on one of the, you know, that's where a lot of the national stuff come from because they, they dissect everything he says on the national, or I mean, on that one weekly uh, segment that he does, that's an hour long. Like, yeah, he's, he says a bunch of weird stuff. I promise you in my mind, or at least in my opinion, what he's saying right there in some weird twisted way is um, Dak is the guy. And he'll t he, we're going to go as far as Dak will take us. And my po my position on what he can do has not changed. And Dak and Jerry Jones believes in Dak. Oh, he kind of sounds like he's saying like, okay, you know, it's on you now. Like, yeah, of course it is. But shit, and, shit and, or get off the pot now, man. And here in Dallas, we've already seen like they're, the the Cowboys already have like three different ways that they can restructure or change, manipulate his contract and there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes. So yeah, that's, that's Jerry. Like, I don't want to talk about it, but you're going to force me to say something. So look, <laughs> Dak is the guy he's going to take us as far as he's going to take. And that's how far we're going to go is how far he can take us. Like, but anyway, I, pr I promise you it wasn't as big of a, it wasn't as big as it sounds. It's not, you, you won't see Lance starting next season. So no, no, <laughs> Maybe the year after that. It depends if Dak shits the bed. See yeah. a comment by Ethan talking about the guy in Houston is a huge threat. Don't get me started on CJ Stroud, but yeah, I've been talking about him all year. Don't get it. Don't get Genuvial's panties wet. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, CJ Stroud. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I thought that uh, comment was interesting. I'm not going to ever say that they're going to make any changes until I actually see it. So that's all I got to say about that one. Hey, to yeah. be fair, Genuvio has the right. To be fair. Way, to be fair. He called it way at the beginning. So hats off. Oh, yeah. On, on Stroud. Yeah, and yeah, next yeah. year there'll yeah. be another motherfucker that and be like that, just like with Snead and him and all those other guys. Just It's just funny, bro. Even Janu is a rookie hawk, bro. If if you guys want to know about the rookies that oh, this are class just coming up, man. Hey, what do, I got Bijan and Jameer on my team. Yeah, yeah, because and you I sucked last year and you got the first and second pick of the draft. <laughs> guess, guess who had a uh, huge first round pick? Oh, I do. Yeah, yeah. You and I was just grifted, and you and you sucked for it. again this year. <laughs> I sucked again. This year. <laughs> you took advantage of the of the two and twelve guy. Like, of course, you're going to get better draft picks. <laughs> I had, I didn't take advantage. Of you took advantage of him. And the guy's first started. round draft pick. Okay. You, you, yeah, you are, for all intents and purposes, the Chicago Bears this year. If there's anyone that you yeah, left out statement. on dabs. I was. <laughs> Right after you took Gibbs, I was so mad because that's who I was gonna take. Imagine that I grabbed Gibbs and Stroud. I yeah, was I, yeah. I was so mad. I was like, "Fuck! I want a Gibbs, dude!" Like he's at top of my <laughs> list. Same thing with Flowers. But I'm, I at least I'm got so him. mad I didn't get Laporta. I thought I was just gonna bring up man. Whoever got yep. Laporta got us. Yeah, Laporta got a steal. Tight ends are hard to come by, and he's one to keep. So, yeah. 
Yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm. I'm definitely. Uh, I'm drafting Marvin uh, Harrison Jr. So I can't get. I got to get in the career. I got to get in the career mode because I haven't been yet this year. I should have been this year and I wasn't. And <laughs> my team sucks, so I got to get better at. Hey, you know, it's it's game. It's pretend. So you know, whatever. All right, listen. So Ray thinks that um, the re- the refs gave Kansas City that game. So um, let's uh, here we go, him real quick. Got yeah. happen. <laughs> oh, your segment. Oh, here we go. We got the All right, let's talk. Um, segment. <laughs> I like it. Let's talk some. Let's talk some numbers here. Uh, Has okay. that been sitting this in your needs lap to be the whole time? A regular time? segment. It's this needs to be a regular segment. Has that been so, sitting in your lap the entire right. fucking show? <laughs> So. <laughs> he's just in a talk job. Oh, be, oh yes, he's been so, just having it sit there like crunching it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm ready. All right. So, um, uh, Warren Sharp put out a very interesting report ahead of the uh, the AFC Championship game, Sh- uh, basically focusing on Sean Smith, the hand picked NFL assigned referee uh, for the Chiefs game uh, for the for the the Chiefs, the Chiefs Ravens game. Um, and he pointed out a lot of a lot of shocking numbers. You can find this article online. Um, I'm just gonna kind of hit the the bit the bit the big numbers that stood out to me the most. You can um, post the link in the Discord. I can post the link in the Discord, yes. So we've been talking all season about, you know, oh, is it rigged or is it uh, you know, um, are they are they controlling things? And that's what this is for. I I I I I don't want to say they're scripting it and they're they're deciding games, but with the prevalence of sports betting and being a multi-billion dollar industry, um, when you look at when you look at this game, when you look at this matchup that the NFL is hand selecting refs for, um, the stat that uh, under under Sean Smith uh, officiating in the last three seasons, the home team is seventeen and 29 and three against the spread for a total of 37% in the last three seasons. That's a shockingly low number. Um, He has an extreme bias against the home team. Uh, Generally the home team across the NFL, the home teams win just about 55% of the games. Um, When Smith is officiating, that number drops down to 40.8%. That's an, that's an incredible, any, any other, because any other field, any other occupation position with uh, a, a, you know, a margin of error that large, it, it would, you, you wouldn't be employed. You wouldn't have a job. Um, he's calling, he's calling more penalties, uh, more, uh, more subjective penalties against the home team than he is against the, the away team um, with a difference of hundreds of yards in penalties. Um Again, we've been talking about officiating and the referees and the 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 all season how, how it affects the games all season. Yeah. Um, again, Every week. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think the refs are out here. Um, I, again, I don't think the refs are out here rigging games to the point where they're deciding who wins and loses. But when we look at that stat against the spread, uh, and again with how how expensive the the industry is, there's no doubt in my mind that the the NFL is dipping their fingers in and making decisions that affect, affect the books, affect the, um, you know, uh, uh, when you have, for, for example, it happened earlier in the season with the chiefs. I think it was against the Browns, right? Where Patrick Mahomes was, he went on like a, a 40 yard run and then slid at the last second, right before the goal line. Mm-hmm. If he had scored a touchdown, they would have covered. Yeah, and yeah. because he didn't, the, the the betting public had bet super heavily on them covering and because he slid and missed the touchdown they didn't they didn't cover and the 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 books won a brazilian dollars essentially so now that was a that was a player decision though that didn't have anything to do with the refs you're right but th- that's just it's just another example of how these games are being these games are being meddled with so that would mean mahomes would be in on it too then yeah, and see, I don't think they're it, 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 even if games are being manipulated, which I'm not saying that they're not, because I'm starting to believe that you know Ray is definitely onto something. I mean, 
baby, give me some tinfoil. But I mean, seriously, like I, 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 I am starting to see what you guys, what, what, what we've been alluding to all season. But I don't think, I don't think the players are in on it. They can't be because there's no way you can get, there's no way you can get all these guys. The risk is too great. You know, if there's it, anybody, it, it would be Mahomes. It's kind of anybody. Why? The refs I mean, why? Are that's... More, is my point. I think it's because he's oh, yeah. the he's the dude that's winning Super Bowls. He's the one that's always on the the ref side. He's buddy buddy with them. And I'm not saying that you know it's the players doing it. It could be. That's not my own personal opinion. I think it's just the refs because like I've been saying this you know, all year long. The NFL is classified as an entertainment business. Why would they not be just classified as a sport? Because they have that backup in case anything happens, blah, 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 you know, reason for this in court. Because they have so many times where a ref can easily, because you're just eyeing it. When someone puts the ball down, you get the ball, and you're like, okay, where was it at, blah, blah, blah. They talk to whoever upstairs and then they put the ball down it's so easy to just put the ball down in a different spot or have it marked you know just behind it i see multiple times and you know i'm just looking with my eye i'm not there as close as the refs are but i'm looking at the replays i see where the cone's at and i see where the player is falling and there's so many times where it's hard to tell is it an inch under is it an inch over you could put it on either side and people will be like whatever you know, and it's so close, it's hard to tell. The refs have that decision right there if they can put it over or under, and they get to decide that. And and there's been so many refs that are biased one way or the other um, on how and on their decision makings and things like that. So I think if anything, it would be the refs. And I think it's really easy to just, you know, move a ball where it's at or do little shady stuff like that. Because then if they get in trouble, oh, oh, that ref is bad. Get this ref out of here, dude. I hate that ref. Just get another guy in here. And then he just does the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's easy. Easy money glitch. Again, check out the article. (laughs) Again, it's from from Warren Sharp. I just posted it in the Discord. Um, But it it really maps out the, the discrepancies in the numbers here. And this is just one ref that we're we're pointing out um but what's more telling to me is that by by the the nfl hand selecting this referee that has such a such a bias against the against the home team the ravens were at a disadvantage from the start in my in in my opinion but looking at these numbers again it could be recency bias and and again despite the tinfoil hat i firmly believe that the 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 ravens lost the game themselves dabs uh was this guy this this guy was the ref of that game sean smith yes yeah okay okay no, it's, it's clear. okay yeah so again when when the nfl is is selecting these these this referee when they're selecting this officiating crew it 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 just screams that the 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 home team has a disadvantage here um there are other examples i i to be honest with you i i couldn't really find the the fully encapsulating article like this one um, where certain refs will certain will favor certain teams. This is more of a, this is more of an overall issue versus a, a one team versus another issue. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, so, and that's where I'm at. Too. Another, I, another, like another situation, which would make me think of is if we're going into the, like the, the ALCS and we're choosing Angel Hernandez to be the, the home play umpire who misses 20% of his calls. It's the same. It's the same concept here. It, it it's a it's it's a the the margin of error is way too high to confidently say this ref is is calling the game fairly. So so you could say for that for the Chiefs game uh, that the NFL decided to put that ref as the head ref of that game in hopes that that will give the Chiefs a slight advantage that they make the Super Bowl because they want. Yeah. Why not, not necessarily not Why necessarily not? to make the Super Bowl, but to so it's, so it's not on the players. It's on the NFL kind of sticking their little hand in there saying Man, Yeah, sorry, it, it's not yes. even on the it's not okay. even necessarily on the refs. It, to in my opinion, if if there's anything going on that's fishy, it's not even on the refs, it's not even on the players. Yeah. It's the NFL choosing certain crews for certain games and, based and on again, what they for, want for to me, happen. For me, it's not deciding the outcome of the uh, the the 
the the win loss outcome of the game. It I'm focusing more on the you know the spread for example the money, the money line that that's where yeah, the money yeah. is. At the end yeah. of the day, it, it they don't care who goes to the Super Bowl. They're still going to be the 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 most watched TV event on. They're of still the going to make a <laughs> they're going to make a a, a gorillion dollars on on ad revenue. Like, are the ratings going to be lower if it was the if it was, you know, if it was the Lions and the Ravens? Sure, they're not going to be that much lower. So, but yeah, not when be... when you have these these giant, I mean, massive sports betting sponsors that they have billions of dollars on the line every week of course the nfl is going to favor them they're gonna they're, they're going to to adjust things to how they want it to be and they're so, all they were all nfl sponsors this and, year. and the proof of this you <laughs> we know saw me. the commercials you know me i love i love my i love my my point spread <laughs> margins for, for picking these games and it's worked all throughout the postseason where for example when kansas city went into buffalo they were they were my uh, they were plus two and a half that's they were road dogs within that three and a half point margin. And I bet that and I hit it going into Baltimore. They were plus four. That's above my margin. I'm going to bet against that every time, but because of factors like this, the, and not only did they win the game outright, but they also covered. So I bet against that and it, it, it blew up in my face because Despite me looking at my at the trends of betting, it, it went against the trend of the Chiefs. It went against the trend of the officiating crew, and it, it's definitely being it's definitely being manipulated. I can't I cannot be convinced otherwise. <laughs> and that's why you got the hat on. And that's why I have the hat on. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's all about money. And if you're a ref and someone offers you like I don't know how it works, but you know they give you a call and they're like, "Hey, that man Jameer Gibbs fourth quarter." You know, they're trying to take him out. Why don't you just put that ball, you know, a yard a yard behind or so and just, you know. Yeah. Okay. No, sure Lee, come on. Yeah, here no. we go. And Janu, that's Wacko, Brian, how, how many prize picks and underdogs have you missed by? By just a yard. One, that's why two. I've been saying this whole season. I had a bet two weeks ago that made me think about quitting forever. I It was like a $250 <laughs> win, and I had three people on that bet out of the six people I got right, and they were all down by exactly, guess how much, one single yard yep. on I three missed, people. I missed a th- I missed a it's three leg parlay easy. by one leg by one and yard on. CMC. Are you gonna go through uh, uh, the replay and watch the film with goggles and like look close in to make sure they count every single yard? No, you're not going to. You're just gonna trust the stats. There's so many little things that they can do to just put it down by a yard. That's why at the beginning of the season they don't know how people are gonna play, so the stats are all over the place and you're winning because it's fair. At the end of the season they get it down to a certain point where they're like, all right. It's probably going to be around here by fourth quarter, and then we can take him out. Like that thing with Brees Hall. They were running to him the whole game. They didn't throw it to him. They finally throw to him in the fourth quarter. Oh, penalty. Oh, what the hell? There's a penalty? Up. Oh, yep, take it back on the offense. So guess what they do after that? Put in a backup. He didn't get it. I lost like three of my bets. They were all off by one. And I feel like when they have something – that is a bet that everyone's betting on whether you know it or not a lot of people Mm -hmm. pick it all they got to do is just rig a couple of them just by a little bit if anything goes wrong oh that ref is sketchy get out this ref dude that ref is trash yeah let's get in another guy (laughs) like it's that easy to do it i feel like you can look always look at everything on both ways never just be all in on one thing about the NFL being rigged but it's a good thing to keep an open mind to when you see stuff like that it pisses you off but you know <laughs> and I get yeah. a out there I, hey Woo. Ray can you can you can you pass your hat over to him real quick cuz i mean i think yeah i think he's he he needs a <laughs> bigger uh, I, think we all need, you. <laughs> I think we all need our own thf tinfoil hats over here uh, so that might be how we do the show from now on <laughs> you're gonna have to but anyway i think, I think ray's tinfoil segment should be a, be a thing <laughs> yep i just happened to lose all my bets by a yard man yep. my luck sucks uh, <laughs> uh, that's gambling Some, somewhere <laughs> so, yeah. somewhere <laughs> dude Somewhere, somebody won all those bets by a yard. 
Well, somebody's smart enough to bet the unders on these, and they're they're sitting there sweating until the literal last second. I'm gonna look at all the most popular. Like, yes, he's got benched. <laughs> all the best picks on Prize Pick. I'm gonna take all of them and then just go under on all of them, and then they're all gonna hit over. Yep, that's just how it is. For real, ah. for real, for real. <laughs> that's good stuff. That's good stuff. Um, all right, we'll we'll I... remove the hat and move along. Right. <laughs> back, back on track reality. back on track oh. hey let's uh real quick we'll go ahead and take a look at those pickums and how to how everybody did in the in the uh discord community um we got uh dabs still in the lead your lead has shrunk yeah going one for oh for, or one for one for two didn't do you a whole lot of favors we had a lot of uh we had a, what one person get them both no uh, yeah, one person. Oh, it's only like, one yeah. person got them both, and she snuck up right, right there also, under you. Janu, are you okay? All right, I'm just gonna say something real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. At the beginning, I had really strong opinions about the playoffs. After that, I was like, "Ah, oh, shit, I'm gonna lose." So then, after that, I was like, "Okay, I think this and this and this is gonna happen." I gotta pick the opposite because I'm behind and I gotta catch up. And you know what that did? It just dug me. Just dug me <laughs> hey, it's like losing by a yard, man. I'd like to point out that that uh, Brian had one point uh, in the, you know, he had one correct pick in 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 the first week, and then now he's ahead of you. Yeah, yeah, because he went perfect in the second round. Yep. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, he caught up real quick after that second round. It was one of the, one of the few people got every game correct. Uh, it didn't, it didn't catch me up quite as well. Well, it did. It caught me up also. But then I, I went over to, just like Janu. Um, I, however, was not picking the opposite of what I thought would happen. I really did think that Baltimore was going to win that. Um, yep. I was more iffy on Detroit winning. I really was. To me, it was a coin flip. Um, and, and, man, did I look really smart in the first half. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like, damn. Yeah, I didn't uh, – I really thought it was going to be Kansas City. I've been saying for weeks, if it is rigged, that Kansas City will be there. Um, he was right. And uh, – I get for the, the rest. Uh, the rest of your bracket was a mess, but I mean, just like a, just like Wacko, I, it was a coin toss. I, it was, I wanted Detroit to be there, but I, you know, I wasn't surprised to see Kansas City. Yeah, so I that one like was I, just a toss up. But I, I had a feeling Kansas City was going to pull it out. Yeah, I have to admit, I was, I was just wrong on Kansas City. I, I, uh, I was giving. I it knew was a that game they time had decision. Really, I was watching the numbers. I was, and again, plus four. I, I, I had this one. I, I felt I felt it in my bones that they were going to win this, and I was wrong. They didn't even cover the they didn't even cover the spread. Yeah, I, I that's twice. kind of the same way for me. I I I in fact I spent most of the week defending uh, Mahomes, Janu, in our conversations like behind the scenes. I was sitting there defending Mahomes and defending the Chiefs because of that next level that I know they're capable of, and I still bet against them. Because I thought that the Ravens, it was their time to overcome. Like a lot of people thought for but for the Bills the week before, a lot of thought a lot of people really thought this was the time that the Bills were going to overcome and get past Mahomes. That's how I felt this week about Baltimore. <laughs> it wasn't a knock on Kansas City. In fact, Kansas City's my AFC team, and I bet against them because I thought that strongly about Baltimore. But. Like just like Ray said, they did they didn't show up. No. Nope. But yeah, so we got. Uh, I mean, it comes down to the because everybody did so well on Pickums this year or in the in the playoffs for the most part, besides me and Janu, um, that it, it's anybody's game. It, it really comes down to the Super Bowl because everybody's within fifty points of each other. Uh, besides, I've already uh, sent my pick, Janu, Mr. Wacko. So, all right, right on, right on. And don't forget to pick your total points scored as well Same. if you're on the list and, and watching at home. Um, get it to me by by Saturday. Or, well, well, no, you got two weeks because, yeah, we got a week in between. Guys, we got a bye week next week. 
We don't have to do a show. Yes. Um, The NFL honors are a few days after that. So maybe we can discuss our picks for those awards. You know, maybe cover that. And a little Super Bowl preview. A little little betting. Yeah, maybe so. A little uh, A, a little bit of B. Let's talk in our chat off screen. We'll we'll just make a decision whether we're going to do a bye week or if we're going to have a show on something on when there's no games to talk about. Uh, uh, Brian. Yeah, because uh, I was going to take this opportunity to go into the next segment here and talk about um, what we think is going to happen next week. Yeah. Anybody want to start? On their Super Bowl prediction? Niners. Uh, <laughs> I, geez. I, like, I, I, I don't even know at this point. I really want I really want to see Niners. I think they had the better offense. But uh, the friggin' Patrick Mahomes is a slimy, sneaky guy, and he just figures it out every time. <laughs> and it's just like... It seems like a lock, and I hope I that Tony Romo is the announcer for this freaking game because if he was, he would be going crazy over Mahomes just like he was in the last game. Yep. He what? absolutely glazes. Fire up, get, fire up the Vaseline. Who has what? What? What station has the game this year? CBS. Mr. Romo. Oh, so yeah, it'll it'll be Romo and Nance. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, it's so <laughs> funny, dude. Uh, yeah, the Chiefs are gonna win a Super Bowl. Yeah, you think so? Yeah. Chiefs are gonna win yeah. again. Yeah. Um. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Who do you want to win? Let's let let let's forget about everything either team has done all season. What they're capable in the playoffs, all nothing, nothing matters. Nothing matters except for who do you? If you could script it, who would you? Would if, would you if have I could win? Script, if I could script it, I would make it a tie, and then when they go <laughs> into the time, oh, they don't score, and then they just keep not scoring. That's that's how I would script it. See, I would take it a step forward, uh, a step further than that, and I would script it so that a fucking meteor comes down and just destroys Las Vegas, oh, and man. then we don't have to watch this god awful game. Whoa, 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 whoa! Vegas has nothing to do with the <laughs> with who's in the Super Bowl right now. Well, uh, it has something to do with the Super Bowl. Though. Hey, we're still trying you know, to gamble, the- man. We're gonna get the yeah. itches of Vegas. Just calm down. down, calm down. <laughs> that is too much. Inappropriate. Vegas is a fantastic city. <laughs> But yeah, uh, I don't really want anyone to win. But if I had to choose, I'd rather have the 49ers just because it's different. And, you know, Purdy's the guy. So it'd be fun to watch him win. I don't want to watch Mahomes win again. Okay, but, see, you know. hang on. Let me stop you right there just for a second because you got asked in the Discord uh, if you felt the same way I felt about the 49ers getting their sixth Super Bowl. And so that answers that question right now. Uh, you don't this care. This is a tough. Uh... Yeah, I don't care. Well, this is tough because, so, for one thing, if the Niners win, they get their sixth Super Bowl and they tie the Patriots. If the, if the Chiefs win, then we have to listen to the, the national sports media dick ride Patrick Mahomes for the next God only knows how long because, oh, he's doing better than Brady in his first six seasons and he's the GOAT even though he has to do it for 14 more seasons. And still win <laughs> four more Super Bowls on top of it. Yeah, that. and don't get me wrong, oh, Mahomes. Like <laughs> Mahomes is the goat, and I appreciate his talent. But the glazing's got to stop. It's got to end here. <laughs> We've got to just have a, a discussion with all the commentators, especially Romo, and be like, "Look, we get it. He's good, but like every single but time, but he glazes jo- Josh Allen too. Uh, listen to what to Tony Romo. The guy loves his quarterbacks, man, and he's got about. Half of them around the league. Any any quarterback that's good, he glazes, bro. He loves him some quarterbacks um, and linebackers too, for some reason. Uh, but yeah, it's he's yeah. That's just him, man. That's just him. It's not oh, necessarily geez, just hilarious. Mahomes. I'm on the cheese bandwagon. I'm a Swifty now. Well, it, like I said, I okay. So 
Uh, the AFC is my my default AFC team. If the if the NFC didn't exist, I'd be a Chiefs fan. They start the franchise started off as the Dallas Texans, moved to Kansas City. <laughs> they you spelled they, that wrong, Brian. There's an Mahomes. A. Mahomes is a Texas kid. He went to Texas Tech. Uh, like. There, there, there's a lot, a lot of reasons. And, and one of my best friends that I watched a lot of football with for many years uh, was a KC fan, and so I kind of got into the Chiefs way back in the beginning of like when Reed came over and uh, the Alex Smith era. So you know, I've been a, I've been a Chiefs fan by default for the just if just talking about the AFC for a long time, even when they sucked. So I'm kind of glad to see them winning and getting, and and I'd love to see them cha- challenge Brady and the Patriots dynasty. For yeah. you know, I like dynasties. I don't mind dynasties at all. So and I think it's kind of cool. It's, I think it adds more to the conversation. Um, as much as I don't like LeBron James, I love talking about MJ versus LeBron. You know, like you you don't have that if you don't have somebody else coming up behind. You know. And you know Brady did play for as long as he did, and and set all those records. Well, somebody's gonna have to. You're gonna have to start really young to catch him, and Mahomes is doing that, so he deserves to be in the conversation, even if it's premature. So I, I love the. I love it. And it's on top of that, like I said, I can't have San Francisco winning six Super Bowls. They haven't won a Super Bowl since 1994. The Cowboys won in 1995. They also have five Super Bowls. I sure as hell don't want to see San Francisco win in their sixth Super Bowl before the Cowboys win their sixth Super Bowl. So, no, I will never, ever, ever root for San Francisco, no matter how much I like the Purdy story, no matter how much I like the CMC story, no matter how... Well, no, I hate Kittle. Um, So, yeah. (laughs) Never, never will I root for San Francisco, just like I will never, never root for the Steelers or the Patriots. No. I'm out. For the Titans? That, I'm done. <laughs> I'm, I'm out. Your, Shit. How, how, how many Super Bowls do you have? <laughs> Zero. Zero, actually. Uh Hey, I love me some underdogs too. As much as I love, you know, the dynasties, and and I will admit this, um, because I'm being called a hater in the in the uh, chat here. Uh, when it came to the Patriots, I was, I, I really was, and I'm I'm I admit I ate crow on that. I've even done it already on this podcast when I admitted uh, after years of hating on Tom Brady, I admit he's the goat. You know, like Mahomes is going to have to work real hard to even com- convince me who likes him and is cheering for him to, that he's going to get close. Cause right now he's not even halfway there. So, but, um, it, it the conversation's fun. And, um, but I, I, like I said, I, I was a hater, but I'm not anymore. You know, I love, I we're, we're witnessing great greatness. We're witnessing one of the best coaches in the league dominate four trips to the Super Bowl in five years Mahomes is his quarterback that whole time. Like, this is good football, guys. No matter what you think about the Chiefs, no matter what you think about Mahomes, this is good football. Yeah, it's it's good for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, I, it's just a, it's just a boring Super Bowl for me. I'm I'm not gonna act like I'm not gonna sit there and watch the whole thing. Of course I am. You know, it's football, but uh, there's. Not any personal reason for me to really vote for anyone. I don't got any fantasy players on either side. Like, I don't really got nothing. There's no underdog to root for. It's just as like, soon as you as soon as you place your bets, you'll you'll have people to root for. <laughs> CMC touchdown. <laughs> CMC anytime yeah. touchdown, yeah, baby. Anytime TD. I hit the so safest hit, pick in football. <laughs> the, my only my only two bets to hit this week, thanks to our parlay getting nuked. Um, I had uh, CMC and Jameer Gibbs anytime touchdowns in one parlay, and then I bet a solo prop on CMC, uh, two or more touchdowns, both of which hit. So I will take it, but you better believe I'm running into the Super Bowl with a CMC anytime touchdown for sure. Yeah, without yeah, a doubt, I, I wouldn't blame it. I, I yeah. wouldn't blame you. Part of my I'm also going to jump back on the Kelsey bandwagon (laughs) 
and do a Sorry. Travis Kelsey anytime touchdown because that's, also that's the NFL, the NFL salivating. I think this should that. be a thing. I think I think we should all go live while we're watching the Super Bowl and do this. Take a shot every time they they show Taylor Swift. <laughs> hey, you know what would be crazy though? This outcome in the Super Bowl. Imagine if, even though you know we all wanted the Ravens or at least actually she's not going to be there. No, no, no. There's math. Uh, mathematically, it can work. It's not going to work. I'll post it. She's going to take a Concord it. jet. <laughs> I saw a TikTok earlier. The guy did the math with the time zone differences because she's in Japan on the tech. Right. So if she's that's 16 hours behind. It ends at 10. She figures she'd be done by 11 p.m. Doing the math. All she has to go is that way. When her plane just has to go that way instead of that way, and she'll go back in time, and then she can make it there on time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She'd have to leave like right after a concert, like get on the plane. That's crazy. Wait, if she's 16 hours ahead, she's already gonna know who wins the game anyway. <laughs> she'll, be in, so, she'll be in Japan. She'll already know. Yeah, she's in the future. No, she's if it's on the tenth, then it would have been. It's only the ninth, or going into the tenth here, right? If they're ahead, right? By the time it would be nine p.m. Ah, fuck, I'm too. I don't know. Wait, is is Japan? Take another hit of your. 16, <laughs> are is then, Japan then we'll sixteen hours ahead or behind us? Ahead? Ahead, ahead, yeah. And she has to be there on the 10th. Yeah. So she has to be there on our 9th. So yeah. she won't be able to be there because she'll have to be there. It's It'll still be the 9th here, but it'll be the 10th already there. She'll already need to be there. Huh. Right? Am I saying uh-huh. that? If you took a shot every time that Romo <laughs> gushed about Mahomes, you would be so drunk, passed out drunk by the end of the session. <laughs> uh, but anyways, what I was going to say is, is that imagine if the 49ers actually went out there and like blew out the Chiefs. And then it would be like, well, then what do you think about them? Because the entire season, the Chiefs have been bummy. Of course, they play better off in the playoffs, but they're going against a real contender. They already beat the Ravens, so I'm not going to go crazy on that take because, like, I, I feel like the Ravens are. Because the Ravens excited. smoked the Chiefs, uh, smoked the uh, the Niners in the regular season. Yeah, that would be like that would be my favorite outcome. As if one of the teams blew out the other, that would be. Uh, Really? Uh, yeah, because like if Mahomes did all that and then he won all these Super Bowls and then he just got blew out, like <laughs> that shit would just be crazy, bro. No shot. So what if what if Mahomes goes and smokes the 49ers? You'd That's be happy gonna with put that up. One? I wouldn't be as happy, but it would be funny because then it's <laughs> like I don't think it's gonna happen. At least at that point, it's like uh, Purdy. He's you know he's young, so whatever. Mahomes, if Mahomes got smoked by Purdy that hard, that would be remembered forever. Like, everyone would be talking about that shit. Mahomes goes to four Super Bowls in the past five years, and Purdy just smokes his ass, and then yep. everyone thinks so-and-so about Mahomes, and then all the memes. like uh, it would Maybe be Purdy will be Mahomes uh, as Eli was to Brady. The arch nemesis. That would be funny. Oh, yeah. oh there's a good I mean, one. Bra- to be fair, Brady was to Mahomes what – Eli was the Brady, so uh, yeah, yeah. Um, what about um? I was gonna say um. Shit, come back to me. <laughs> the pen. Yeah, I, I I lost my train of thought. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just hits it for two seconds. It's like, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> see, um, I I I found my thought. Um, look, Purdy has had a four, a four interception game. Um, he's had, he's had some games where he was, he was not the guy, uh, this year. Um, he did really good in the, in the, in the NFC championship. So we know he's capable of big game moment of handling big games and big game moments, especially being down 24 seven versus the lions and coming back to win that game handedly. Um, yeah, he, he is capable of it, but we also know he's capable of the other thing too. So is anybody going to be surprised if that Purdy shows up for the Super Bowl? 
Yes. You're going to be surprised or okay. To what degree would you be surprised though? If he throws more than one interception, I'd be extremely surprised. So you you think there's not not much of a chance that 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 you know Mister Irrelevant shows up? I th- yeah I think he'll get picked off. Um, it's a pretty safe bet. You know he he hasn't really been picked off a lot in the the postseason so far. Um, but I mean, are, are we also talking? You know, keep in mind a four interception game. Uh, I'm pretty sure the four interception game he had two of those were in receivers' hands and popped out. So again, that's an interception is an interception, but um, you know, if he throws, if if he puts one in Debo's hand and it pops out and ends up in in the you know the defender's hand, it, is it is it really his fault? Is it really Purdy being the the, the Mr. Irrelevant? Or um, again, I'm not trying to like I'm not trying to make excuses, and I'm not trying to be preemptive, but. I, I don't think there's a shot that he goes out there and, and throws, you know, two or three interceptions. I think they'll just keep running the ball if that's the case. He'll keep check downing it to to, to uh So um, you think you think Shanahan CMC. will take the ball out of his hands. Yeah, I mean they'll they'll do what they did last season when he busted his elbow and they'll just keep they'll pass it off, they'll check down it. Uh, if he th- if he's throwing two I mean they're not gonna bench him for Sam Darnold in the Super Bowl, but no, I don't think he's. God, no. I don't think he's going out there and throwing three picks. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure, sure. I just, you know, I, I in the back of my mind, I know it's still possible. You know, I I know he was, you know, until until he gets enough skins on the wall or 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 until until there's a big enough body of work to really get a good measurement. Um, I know he was the last pick in the draft, probably for a reason. You know, um. Obviously, there are exceptions to the rule. Brady was the sixth, sixth round pick, you know, but uh, but until we know that's who Purdy is, in the back of my mind, I still think, okay, well, this is a really young kid getting a chance at the big on the absolute biggest stage he'll ever be on. Like it doesn't get bigger bigger than this, um, you know. Not everybody can handle that the first time around. You know, and so in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, well, it's it is still possible for him to shit the bed. You know, he could be the next Lamar Jackson or the next Dak or the next whatever. When it when the game gets to a certain level, he's not going to be able to do it. He could be that he could be that next guy that we're saying that about. You know, he really could. But. That's why we play the games. What else do you want to talk about, gentlemen? I know we already we mentioned our parlay. I won't even say it, it died. We shit the bed right out of the gate. We missed both both of our picks in the Detroit one, or two of our picks in the Detroit one. The yeah no the Baltimore game missed both and then, oh the Baltimore game yeah and then the first Jameer game. Gibbs did not have forty nine. He had a touchdown, but he did not have fifty yards of, of rushing somehow. That's so. how big on uh, Lamar Jackson I was because it's a good I. Thing go with the other one well no my other one was going to be a cmc touchdown oh well yeah that's a given but no you you originally wanted to do uh lamar jackson like over 66 and a half rushing yards i'm like there's zero shot oh yeah what did he end up i I was curious about that what did he end up rushing for i know he had a couple decent runs but i I didn't because i was starting to think Uh, oh man i would probably would have hit it but then he didn't do really i don't think so um, and then the anytime touchdown for Lamar also did not hit, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, no, what, what I didn't say is, and, and it wouldn't have mattered cause we, we blew it either way. But, uh, I, I, my initial thing was, I was going to tell you CMC. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, it's got, you know, CMC is all day. Yeah. He had 54 yards, so it wasn't, he wasn't too far off, but anyway, um, yeah, I was initially, I was going to tell you just, I was going to take the easy one CMC. And I was like, I felt so good about Lamar that doing duplicating what he did against Houston that, uh, I was like, give, give me him. And I, damn it. And Brian even told me that he liked it. <laughs> you know, he's like, that's a good one. Cause I think I took it in a couple of my other bets too, in my, uh, parlays. The two that I missed this weekend, I I was two for two for four on prize picks this weekend. Got thirty bucks out of it. Nice. Not bad, not terrible. Could have been worse. Could have been zero dollars. So, 
like the week before. Hmm. I was like, oh, for six. So uh, I'm thinking we uh, do something special for the, the Super Bowl and we do a super parlay. Ooh. Where we do, you know, maybe instead of one leg each, we do two legs each. Or we do two parlays. But we will we'll collaborate and we'll figure that out prior to the Super Bowl. So, um, has anybody else signed up for Squares? Or is it still just me and Patriot Dad? Uh, yeah, I got a few more. Yeah, let's see. Uh, um, I didn't update. I didn't update the the board yet. I need to. Let's see. Where is it? There she blows. I didn't know, update the board yet, but yeah, we do have Super Bowl squares. They're three hundred Twitch bits a piece, or three dollars PayPal, and you can get me, get get me in in Discord on what my PayPal is. Um, but there's going to be five winners per quarter. Um, we've got what is that? About eighty six squares left to go to sell in the next week and a half. But it's twelve thousand eight hundred V bucks or cash equivalent. Five winners per quarter, or up to five quor- because it's. The winning square that hits, um, and then the squares surrounding it, top, bottom, left, and right. The orange square, if that were the example winner, wins 2,800 V-Bucks, and then each one of the yellow square squares win 1,000. Or cash equivalent, if you'd rather have me PayPal you that uh, money you can cash out instead of taking the V-Bucks, that's up to you. Um, but yeah, hit me up, hit me up on any of my live streams or even right now in the chat, 300, uh, Twitch bits per square and, um, we'll rock and roll. But yeah, that's what the board looks like right now. So everything where you don't see a name is an open square. All right. Bada bing, bada boom. And I'll go live sometime on Sunday before the Super Bowl. I'll go live to uh um, get the last minutes. Uh do the uh do the numbers and also if you go to my Twitter right now and um retweet like like and retweet the post that has the squares um and then obviously follow me on Twitter so I can see that you liked and retweeted it um then I'm going to also do a drawing for three free squares that will cost you absolutely nothing and give you the same opportunity to win. So there's a few people that have already retweeted that that tweet. I know it's X now. I refuse to call it X. Um, just go over there and like, retweet, follow, and get, get in the drawing for the three free squares. All right. <laughs> and that's the Super Bowl squares. I think it's, uh, I think it's bedtime, gentlemen. Alrighty. All right, Sounds boys. Good to me. Well, in that case, we should do a wave. See you next week. Maybe. X Stay squared. Tuned.